Hey everyone, David Aragona here with the final edition of the Timeform US Road to the Derby series of the 2023 Derby prep season as there is just one more prep race offering Kentucky Derby qualifying points and that is the Grade 3 Lexington on Saturday at Keeneland. This one just offering 20 points to the winner so probably not going to shake up the Kentucky Derby point standings too much but as we throw up the field for this race you will note there is one horse in this field the number six Six, Disarm, who currently has 40 points, which puts him on the bubble just out of the top 20 at the moment. So if he gets a top three finish in this Lexington, that would get him set anywhere from 20 down to six points, which would be enough to vault him up into that top 20. So we'll see if Disarm is able to do that. Uh, he is listed at seven to two on the morning line for this Lexington. Uh, the slight favorite is the number five first mission. No surprise going out for the powerful Brad Cox stable. He is one of the more Lightly raced members of this field. Brad Cox also has the number three Demolition Duke in here. Interesting wild card is the number 11 Arabian Lion drawn on the outside trying to get back on track for the Bob Baffert stable and also the number eight Empire Strikes Fast. Another one likely to take money in this 11 horse field. Before we get to those main contenders, let's take a look at the Timeform US pace projector for this race. And there is a little bit of speed signed on here, so not a big surprise to see that Timeform US fast pace flag showing up. The number 11 Arabian Lion, you would imagine his jockey Irad Ortiz will be looking to get that position on the lead because he did draw a difficult post position out widest of all. So this is a horse who has done some nice running on the front end in the past. That's how he achieved his only victory. So you would imagine they will have some intentions on going forward from that wide draw. But others like Transect, First Mission, and even the long shot, Curly, Larry, and Mo could also flash some speed in this race. So I won't be surprised if they're moving quickly up front. Let's also take a look at one of the new features in Timeform US, the Finish Projector. You can access the Finish Projector by checking out the new version of Timeform US that has launched both on DRF mobile PPs and on DRF desktop, just the tab right next to DRF Formulator in your DRF past performances. And the Finish Projector is just basically a visual representation of the Timeform US power picks that you might have already been familiar with from the classic version of Timeform US. But the added bonus is that it shows the relationships between horses at the wire instead of just giving one, two, three picks. And you can see that the number eight, Empire Strikes Fast, and the number five, First Mission, are the two that look the best on the Timeform US data. Again, they're lightly raced runners who have run some nice speed figures, so not a big surprise that they're shown doing well based on uh, the algorithm. The number 11, Arabian Lion, another horse who has run some big speed figures who is shown up close uh, on the finished projector. Let's get to the main contenders in this race. And we're going to begin with some horses that are coming up from fairgrounds. First of those is the number six, Disarm, and he's the one that a lot of the Kentucky Derby point standings bubble horses will be watching in this race because they don't want to see themselves get leapfrogged by Disarm if he does get some points out of this Lexington. He did finish second last time out in the Louisiana Derby behind Kings Barnes, and that was a race that did not feature much early pace whatsoever. You could see those blue color-coded Timeform US pace figures for the entire running line of the Louisiana Derby. Also, that ascending numerical pattern indicates a race that did feature a very slow pace. And Disarm did close pretty well into second that day, well clear of the rest of the field. He did ride the rail for much of his trip, and there's an argument that rail... Uh, uh, trips in the Louisiana Derby were really preferred. He was just able to follow other horses moving forward into the race, including Kings Barnes, who rode the inside throughout in his gate to wire victory. I do think Disarm has potentially another step forward in him. He is just third off the layoff. He was rushed into that Louisiana Derby a little bit, coming back just five weeks after he returned in that allowance race at Oaklawn Park. So there could be another forward progression for Disarm, but I do think he's going to have to run a little bit faster if he will beat some of the major players in this race. One of the Brad Cox trainees in this field is the number five, First Mission. We'll take a look at his past performances in Timeform US. And he's coming in as one of the fastest horses on speed figures. He competed in a very fast maiden special weight event at Fairgrounds back in the middle of February when he lost his stablemate, Bourbon Bish, uh, Bishop, uh, sorry, Bishop's Bay, as both of those were making their career debuts that day, and they finished well clear of the rest of the field. Uh, first mission getting a 116 time form US speed figure for his runner up finish that day actually knocked down a little bit from an impressive 119 final time number. 
Brad Cox stretched him right out to the two turns in the second start of his career, going this mile and the 16th distance at fairgrounds last time. And he got a solid 110 time form US speed figure for that effort. A slight regression on his debut, but when you go back and watch that race, he won that race as easily as the jockey pleased, uh, just stalked a long shot leader in the early stages, took over on the far turn, and just won under very minimal hand urging through the lane like a horse that could have run faster or fast to do so. We'll see if he's able to make a forward move here because he likely will have to get asked to do a little bit of running against this tougher field in the Lexington. But I do get the sense that First Mission is a horse that has a lot of ability and arguably has shown more brilliance at this point than his main rival, Disarm. One factor that I do want to consider with regard to first mission, though, given that he's likely to be a short price, is this DRF formulator fact for Brad Cox. With horses coming off maiden wins over the past five years in dirt route stakes races, Brad Cox is five for 30. A decent win percentage of 17 cents, but a lot of short prices in this sample, which do account for that relatively low ROI of just 94 cents on a $2 wager. So maybe a slight negative to consider, but the horse that could be the favorite in this race. Let's move on to take a look at the other Brad Cox trainee in this race, the number three Demolition Duke. And like first mission, he has one sprint and one route so far in his past performances. He debuted going the six furlong distance and made a nice wide sweeping run to take over that day, winning going away by three lengths like a horse that might appreciate some added ground. And that proved to be the case last time when Brad Cox stretched him out around the two turns to go the mile and 70 yard distance in an allowance race. And he ran into the horse that actually was... uh, that actually beat first mission on debut and that was bishop's bay the horse that got that very fast speed figure for his debut victory bishop's bay was the heavy favorite when he came back and faced off against his stablemate demolition duke in that march 19th allowance race and Demolition Duke made that favorite work pretty hard for the victory. He took a nice run at this horse in the stretch, and Bishop's Bay was able to turn him away, but I thought that Demolition Duke put in a game effort. You'll note those blue color coded time form U.S. pace figures in his running line, which indicates that was a very slow pace, and those early pace figures of 54 indicate it was an extremely slow pace for the distance. So I thought Demolition Duke actually did pretty well to make up some ground that day and almost got to the winner, Bishop's Bay, who many regard as a future state source for the Brad Cox barn. So I think there are plenty of things to like about Demolition Duke as he does step up to face a tougher field in this Lexington. Let's take a look at a horse coming from a different direction, and that is Empire Strikes Fast, who broke his maiden on debut at Gulfstream Park, and we'll take a look at that race. That is Empire Strikes Fast battling back on the inside of Dreamlike, who was the heavy favorite this day, and people will remember that Dreamlike did come back out of this race and just barely lost the Wood Memorial last week, despite coming into that race as a maiden. Dreamlike was right there at the end with winner Lord Miles and runner-up hit show, just losing the Wood Memorial by about a head. Uh, so that certainly flatters the form and the last speed figure of Empire Strikes Fast. And that did come back a very fast race. Empire Strikes Fast 113 time form US speed figure is the highest last out time form US speed figure in this field. And he was pretty game battling back along the inside to fend off that heavy favorite dreamlike a little bit of surprise to the betters and maybe even the connections because this horse was a well-kept secret that day going off at 23 to one. But the secret's out now is he did run that fast speed figure. I have some minor concerns about him running back to it for the Bill Mott stable. I showed that stat for Brad Cox. I also did some digging in DRF formulator to look up some similar stats for trainer Bill Mott with last out debut winners making their second starts on dirt. Mott is just two for 28, 7% win rate with a dollar and three cent ROI over over the past five years. So maybe some reasons to downgrade Empire Strikes Fast a little bit, uh, but he definitely did run well in that initial start. The number 11 is Arabian Lion. We'll take a look at his last race when he finished fourth, but fourth of a four horse field. So last in the grade three Robert B. Lewis at Santa Anita back at the beginning of February. This is a horse that has been short prices in every start so far. There have been very high expectations around Arabian Lion following his debut victory in fast time last fall at Santa Anita. But he's been a bit of a disappointment. Lost his next start at Keeneland as the odds on favorite. Finished last as the odds on favorite in the Los Alamitos Futurity. Again, last, last time. Despite those disappointing results, he still has achieved some nice speed figures. The 116 that he earned in the second start of his career when beaten by Giant Mischief is one of the best numbers been earned by anybody in this field. 
I do have some concerns about the distance for him. They're continuing to run in these derby preps around the two turns. When I watch this horse run and considering his pedigree, I just feel like he's much more of a one-turn runner, probably a sprinter. We've seen a progeny of Justify have trouble stretching out uh, across the board in his first crop. He's got a very low percentage uh, of winners in dirt route races compared to sprinters. So I'm a little bit against Arabian Lion, especially if he's anywhere near that 7-2 to two morning line. That just seems like bad value on this horse. Let's move on to some bigger prices. The number nine is Prairie Hawk. He is coming out of the Tampa Bay Derby for trainer Safi Joseph, and that might ring a bell because another Safi Joseph trainee that came out of the Tampa Bay Derby just caused a huge upset in the Wood Memorial last week. That was Lord Miles, who was fifth in that race, and Prairie Hawk actually finished one spot ahead of him, checking in fourth behind Tappa Trice in that Tampa Bay Derby. I didn't see a big excuse for him. He did draw a difficult, a difficult post position, number 12. It had to be used a little bit early to attain some forward position in that race, but I thought he had a fair chance and just didn't really finish off that race. He's going to have to get a little bit faster. I think others in this race have shown themselves to have a little bit more upside than he. Another one coming out of the Louisiana Derby is the number seven, Dennington. Uh, he was uh, a big price that day, 33 to one. So I don't want to be too hard on him, but he's just a horse that didn't really back up the fast time form US speed figure that he had received two back when he won an allowance race, getting a 112. A number like that would make him competitive here, but he didn't come close to it last time. The trip in the Louisiana Derby, kind of like with Disarm, didn't really work out. He was against the slow pace, and unlike Disarm, he was wide every step of the way. I still would have liked to see him pick up his feet and do a little more running in the stretch, and we just didn't see that out of Dennington. I wonder if him getting Lasix 2 back was part of the reason why he was able to run that faster speed figure. The number four is Transect. Uh, I talked about him a little bit with regard to the pace projector. He was one of the runners that was predicted to be forwardly placed in this race, and he did use a front-running style to win over the Tapita surface at Turfway 2 back. He attracted some support in the Gotham last time when he tried the dirt. Uh, didn't run that well, though, despite going off at 8-1. to one. Was uh, in mid-pack early, got briefly bothered by that loose horse that was rushing up down the backstretch, but he really had nothing to offer in the stretch, so didn't really back up his victories on the synthetic surfaces. And just in the overall sense, he's a horse that's going to have to get much faster if he's to beat some others in this field. Another horse who has to get a little bit faster is the number two, Reinvest. And let's actually take a look at his last race when he won at Tampa Bay Downs. And I thought there were some positives this day. As he comes through on the inside, shows some nice grit and professionalism to rally inside of horses to get this victory. He was waiting in traffic around the far turn behind a wall of four horses, really. The other four horses in this race were just strung out across the track. And I thought he did well to be patient and then come through on the inside and beat them. So some likable quality is shown by reinvest but the problem with reinvest is that he just has to get a lot faster his best time form us speed figure of 85 is significantly lower than everybody else who's considered a contender in this race i just think there's a nice frame of a horse here uh, he's got a great pedigree by quality road his dam has produced diversify who's a grade one win that says that maybe this is a horse that is going to do his best running later in his career. And I think he's one that still kind of has to grow up and do himself. So maybe we're not going to see the best from reinvest on this day, but one to keep an eye on for the future. So let's take a look at my top picks for this Lexington as we throw up the selections. And I got those two Brad Cox trainees on top, but in reverse price order, I think the one that's going to offer better value is the number three, Demolition Duke. He hasn't run quite as fast as his stablemate first mission just yet, but I liked what I saw from him in that allowance race last time, closing into the slow pace behind the talented Bishop's Bay. Feels like he's supposed to get some pace to close into once again again with multiple speeds signed on in this race and he's getting a positive rider switch to floppy and pratt so i've got the number three demolition duke on top i do respect the number five first mission as well as the number six disarm and i'll be interested to see how this race potentially affects the final kentucky derby point standings as we look ahead to the first saturday in may thanks for tuning in to the kentucky derby a time form us road to the derby series this year and uh, good luck if you're playing the races this weekend